Akana. Welcome to my Sealskin Solidarity Heart Pin Tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll teach you to create your very own Sealskin Solidarity Heart Pin. Sealskin is a traditional ancient material used by Inuit for survival for millennia. Today I continue that tradition in my work, creating this beautiful orange pin to honor our residential school survivors. In your kit, you should have a bead mat, two bead needles, a pre-assembled sealskin pin, thread, and a variety of beads. You will need scissors. Optional and helpful are pliers. These mini pliers I found at the dollar store. Pliers are helpful for people with mobility issues like arthritis and makes sewing a little easier. First step is to get some thread. Let's peel away that sticker off the bobbin. You'll want to unwind a single piece approximately 30 inches in length. And this single piece should be sufficient to get your whole beaded edging done on your pin. Straighten out your thread, find the end, and this is where we're going to thread the needle. And sometimes it takes a couple of tries. Don't get discouraged. Uh, sometimes you'll get it on the first try and that's great. So get it through the needle and you want to pull it approximately two thirds to halfway through. And we're going to tie a knot on one end. To tie a knot, I use this little trick. So take that end of the thread, place it on your forefinger, place your needle over, and you're going to take the long end and just wrap seven times around your needle. Let's see that again in slow motion. So again, place the end of the thread on your forefinger, place the needle over, and with your opposite hand, you're going to wrap that thread around your needle seven times. And it takes a bit of practice, but you can do it. Once you have it, you're going to pinch, push the needle up through while still maintaining that tight squeeze, and just pull the length of the thread through, and you'll have a beautiful little knot at the end. And you can just snip off the excess thread on the shorter end of the knot. So here we have our pre-assembled pin. And the nature of seal skin, it's not a perfect material because it's natural. Um, sometimes you will see some marks in the skin and that's normal. On the back, we have the butterfly clutch pin and it's pre-assembled, all ready to go. Uh, you'll notice three layers. First, we have the blocked seal skin, meaning that it's stiffened, the Pellon stabilizer in the middle, and the back is Italian lambskin in pumpkin shade. And it's fairly stiff and sturdy, and we're ready to begin. Start with the pin back facing you, and I like to start on this left curve of the heart pin, and you're gonna do your first stitch right under that seal skin. So we want to hide the knot in between the layers. So you can see I just took that first stitch coming from underneath the seal skin. And pliers just help to push and pull the needle through the seal skin because it is such a tough material. And we're going to push that knot down in between the layers just to hide it. It gives it a more professional finish. So now we'll get our beads ready. You can pour some of your beads out onto the mat. You won't need all your seed beads. There are some extra, but we likely will need all of your specialty and accent beads. So pour them all out on the mat and just kind of arrange them in neat little piles so you're ready to go. Grab your pin. And the first step is we're going to start with three seed beads. This will be the only time that you pick up three beads with your needle, is at the very beginning. I like to use my pliers, and we're going to start by pushing the needle from the back 
out towards the front and you want to go through all three layers. Once you've made that stitch, you're going to bring your needle from the bottom out through to the top of that last bead. And we're always going to do this after every stitch. So you're pulling the, your thread through and the thread should be on top. And now we're going to grab a size eight Toho bead and a seed bead. So we're going to create a pattern and what we're doing is a zipper stitch and we're creating a pattern within the zipper stitch. So we're gonna line up your stitch, try to keep it even approximately two millimeters apart, go from the back to the front, pull through. Sometimes you gotta adjust those beads, they like to get tangled. And again, push your needle bottom to the top on that last seed bead. Just give it a gentle tug, not too tight, but not too loose. And now we're going to grab two seed beads. So this is where we're creating our pattern. From now on, we'll grab two beads every time. Take your stitch from the back out toward the front, pull through, and always coming up on that last seed bead from the bottom out through to the top. And now we're going to take a rondelle and a seed bead. And again, same thing, make your stitch approximately two millimeters from the last one. Poke through all three layers coming out the front. And again, bottom to top on that last seed bead. So after every rondelle, or size eight bead, we're going to take our two seed beads. We want this in between every specialty bead combination. And when you're sewing, it's going to feel tough on your fingers. That's just the nature of working with furs, leathers, um, especially seal skin. When I sew, I think of my ancestors and how tough it must have been sewing with bone needles. So now we grab another size eight and a seed bead. And this is the last stitch on this side of the inside corner of the heart. Now that we've made that last stitch, we're only going to take one bead for the inside corner of the heart. So we're going to go on the other side of the dip. Make your stitch on the other side of that inside corner or the dip. And you'll see why we only took one seed bead because it tends to get crowded and we want to prevent overcrowding. So you're going to come up through that single bead from the bottom out through to the top. Less crowding creates a nice clean transition. And now we're going to take a size 8 and a seed bead. We're just going to sort of match the pattern that was on the other side of the dip. We want it to kind of mirror each other. And we're going to continue on. Continue the pattern until you reach the bottom point of the heart. And I'll just speed up the video a little bit as I continue my pattern. So don't forget that every second set of beads that you're going to grab will be the orange seed beads between each specialty set. And we're just going to keep going. You're doing great.
So we're coming to the bottom point and I'm just going to continue my pattern and you want to take this stitch right in the center of the bottom point. And again, coming through from the bottom out the top on that last bead. And here I'm going to take my two seed beads and at this point I'm going to stitch in the exact same hole. So you're going to have two stitches in the same hole at the bottom point of the heart. It's just going to help line up that point nice and even. And you might want to just adjust your beads a little bit and come out from the bottom of that last bead. And see how it creates a nice little point there. So now we can continue the pattern matching the completed side. So because we had a rondelle bead right before the point, we're going to start now again with a rondelle bead. So I'm just going to speed up the video. We're just going to continue the pattern, alternating our beads. Uh, keep going. And you'll always make these little adjustments as you go, just kind of straightening your beads, untangling the thread. And at this point, your needle will probably be really bent out of shape, and that's totally normal. That's one of the hazards of beadwork, but it's totally okay. Uh, if you need to, you can switch out your needle. I did provide two in the kit. Sometimes even the most experienced beaters make a mistake and it's okay, it's totally normal. Just take your thread off the needle, undo the last stitch, and remove that extra bead. You'll notice I grabbed one extra bead. So take that off and we're going to re-thread the needle once again and continue on. Mistakes are okay, it's part of the learning process and then you won't tend to make the same mistake again. So that's why I say mistakes are okay. And then we just carry on beating. So we're coming near the end. Take your last set of two beads. And then once we come to this point, we're only going to pick up one last bead. And in this case, it's a size eight. So this time we're going to push the needle from the top to the bottom on that very first bead we put in. And you're gonna pull your thread, make sure you're staying at the back. And to finish it off, we're going to make our final stitch. You're going to poke your needle through the leather, coming up in between the layers, and through that single bead. I'm just trying to show you there how that looks, and you're just going to pull it right 
through. And you see how it makes a nice seamless transition. And now we're going to poke through that top bead. This is where we're going to hide the thread. And then one more time down through the seed bead right beside the bead we came through. So top through to the bottom, but not through the layers. And now we're going to knot our thread. So put the needle under that stitch, not poking through anything, you're just putting the needle under that stitch. Just moving the thread so you can see. The needle is right under that one stitch. You're going to create a loop. Put the needle out through the loop to make a knot. So when you pull it tight, it just makes a knot on itself. And then I repeat this to make one more little knot. See that? It's nice right at the edge. It's hard to see. And for good measure, I like to tie one more small knot. Just pulling it tight, keeping pressure on it. And then to me, that makes it feel nice and secure. Now we're going to push the needle between the layers. And this can be kind of tricky because there is glue holding the layers together and we do have all these stitches. So you just kind of poke through and adjust until you can find a, a path for the needle. There we go, we found a path and you see where it's coming out just uh, a few stitches down. So push that needle all the way through and we're going to pull it out that end. And you see we still have a few inches of thread left and that's good, that's okay. So you can't see where we did the knot, it's nice and seamless, it just provides a more professional finish for your beadwork. And we're going to very carefully snip the thread. Please don't snip any of your stitches. And now we'll adjust the beads to stand nice and straight. And again, this was a zipper stitch. So you have a nice, simple beaded edging made more interesting with the use of different accent beads and a nice pattern. And now we're gonna take your needle and let me just move some beads off the mat there to give me some working space. A little bit more adjusting. Oh, so pretty. Okay, so now you're going to use your needle to pull out the hair from under the stitches because sometimes the stitches will hold the hair down. So you just want to kind of fluff it up on the edges. And I just do this on the edges, releasing some of the hair that was caught. Uh, you're not really picking at the stitches, you're kind of just pulling the hair between the stitches and there's your finished heart. And here's another step that I do. Um, it's optional. Find an orange marker. Usually a Sharpie works good, like an alcohol based ink so that none of the ink will come off. And you can carefully color in the white thread on the sealskin part only. And it just helps to disguise it. Uh, typically, I would use a colored thread, however, because at this time supplies are difficult to find, it has been challenging to find orange thread, so white is okay, and this is just one way around it to kind of disguise your stitches. So we're coming close to the end. And this just helps the stitches blend in a little better. And now I want to show you all the supplies that we use to create your pin. So these are Precocia seed beads in size 10, opaque orange. Really difficult to find after orange shirt day. These are Precocia seed beads in size 11, also opaque orange. Some of the specialty beads were Toho size 8 transparent frosted hyacinth. I used Pony Sewing Needle, size 12 for beading, and they're 25 in a pack. Nymo Thread, size D, which is a very common, uh, easy to find thread. And, and the other specialty beads were these glass crystal rondelles. And you may have had white, 
gold, or blue. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make your very own sealskin solidarity heart pin for yourself or as a gift for someone you love. Please use the hashtag sealskin solidarity heart if you post online. There's my contact info for any questions or comments. Kuyanaini.